Then you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Leader of the Opposition, Members of Parliament, fellow Fijians. Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you for allowing me to take the floor to deliver my statement in support of the 2020 2021 national budget. Mr. Speaker, sir, right at the outset, let me just quickly say, sir, there is one word. Mr. Speaker, sir, that describes all the material that has come from the opposition today. And that word, Mr. Speaker, sir, is anachronism. Anachronism. Simply put, they've blurred the past with the present. And we're not the only ones living in the past like they, sir. They say, they say sir, they are. They're the ones living in this past. Mr. Speaker, sir, over the years, we have provided Fijians what matters to them most. Affordable and accessible education and health care, better roads and ports, improved connectivity, and the ability to make a good living. Mr. Speaker, sir, without the guidance and the vision of the Honorable Prime Minister, Fiji would not have achieved the growth we experienced over the past decade and Mr. Speaker, sir, achieved COVID contained status. With the greatest of sincerity, Mr. Speaker, sir, Honorable Prime Minister, sir, we thank you for your leadership. And I'd also like to thank the Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Economy for an innovative and inclusive budget for the betterment of all Fijians. Mr. Speaker, sir, the world and our country are facing once in a lifetime challenge with this COVID-19 pandemic. The 2020-2021 budget gives us hope, Mr. Speaker, sir, by providing a well-designed plan to bring us out of this crisis and set us on the road to recovery. Mr. Speaker, sir, in this turbulent time, the only certainty is the uncertainty that we face. Hence, in order to overcome that challenge before us, we need to be steadfast. We need to be unified. We need to be loyal to the well-being of every Fijian in our country. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, sir, what the opposition has stated so far is so polar opposite. Instead of unity, opposition has preached disunity. Instead of togetherness, opposition has preferred divisiveness. Instead of truth, opposition advocates untruths. Instead of honest analysis, Mr. Speaker, sir, opposition chooses to paddle unfounded conspiracy theories. Mr. Speaker, sir, this morning, Mr. Speaker, sir, the leader of the opposition has claimed that the Fijian economy has grown by 0.75% in the last decade. That is 2010, 2010 to 2019. I hear them saying that's right. And now economy specialists saying that's right. Mr. Speaker, sir, however, these facts are completely and utterly incorrect. The average economic growth for the period of 2010 to 2019 was 3.2%, Mr. Speaker, sir. These figures, Mr. Speaker, sir, these figures, listen and learn. These figures, Mr. Speaker, sir, were verified by the World Bank Group, Mr. Speaker, sir, and not just the Reserve Bank of Fiji. So this... This morning's utterance, Mr. Speaker, sir, by the opposition leader is an outright fabrication and manipulation of the facts, of the true facts. And once again, true to form, misinformation is being spread around this house and to the general public of Fiji, Mr. Speaker, sir. Today, Mr. Speaker, sir, the opposition went back on their PESA Plus bandwagon, yet again with no research done, none whatsoever. Mr. Speaker, sir, the opposition should stop speaking about PESA Plus because they clearly don't understand. My ministry, Mr. Speaker, sir, will be happy to run a seminar for the opposition on PESA Plus so that these rather uneducated and embarrassing remarks stop, Mr. Speaker, sir. Let me tell you the real facts. By joining PESA Plus, Mr. Speaker, sir, what benefits are we giving to our Fijian manufacturers? Question one. In fact, PESA Plus will require 
zero rising of 80% of Fiji's trade, Mr. Speaker, sir. PESA Plus will result in liberalization of sectors where Australia and New Zealand industries are more competitive, Mr. Speaker, and they have economies of scale and are more powerful than Fijian industry. This, Mr. Speaker, sir, will be detrimental to many of our Fijian industries. Please understand, PESA Plus will not, and I repeat, will not provide any additional access to Australia and New Zealand markets than what, than what we already have, Mr. Speaker, sir. In addition, PESA Plus will systematically erode our policy space, Mr. Speaker, sir, and our sovereignty and tie our hands with regards to the future trade agreements with any third country. So do some research. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Honourable Leader of Opposition also stated that the reduction of tariffs was worrying and uncalled for and would damage Fijian industries. Yet again, Mr. Speaker, sir, no research done. Here are the facts. Whilst the new tariff structure focuses on reinvigorating our trade and remove, removing bureaucratic processes in obtaining duty concessions and protection is still accorded to domestic manufacturers on similar commodities. Fiscal duties and import excise tax have been reduced on items such as machinery, mechanical appliances and parts, to white goods, vehicles, hygiene products and canned food products. Mr. Speaker, sir, the main reason for the reduction in tariffs is to stimulate economic activity in the manufacturing sector. The import of raw materials has been made cheaper, Mr. Speaker. For example, fiscal duty on footwear and components to manufacture footwear has reduced from 32 to 15 percent, and import excise reduced from 10 to 0 percent. This leads to reduced cost of production ability to compete better and in turn will lead to employment, Mr. Speaker. Local businesses are at the heart of every community and we continue to believe in our ability to produce world-class products, Mr. Speaker, and enhance the Fijian-made brand and what it stands for. This is the time, Mr. Speaker, sir, to show our national pride and demonstrate our support for the brand, including the opposition, Mr. Speaker. As the Honourable Prime Minister has stated, this is the one time the opposition could have risen beyond their usual dogma and displayed some patriotism and some unity for the sake of our nation, for the sake of our health workers. Order. Our order, order. Have you finished? You don't like it when it gets told. Our RFMF personnel, our frontliners, and every Fijian that has sacrificed and helped our nation combat the pandemic, but to no avail, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, in summary, the national budget for the 2020-2021 financial year focuses on getting tourism back on its feet by making the sector competitive, streamlining business processes, empowering MSMEs, and strengthening and diversifying our economic base. You can see, Mr. Speaker, sir, they get all riled up because this is the truth. This is the truth and they don't like it when it's told to them. Mr. Speaker, sir, the nearly instantaneous global economic decline, and this is what I say when, they, when I say that they live in a different world, the nearly instantaneous global economic decline triggered by the pandemic has widespread ramifications on every single sector. Given this economic slowdown, the pro-growth, the pro-growth and the pro-business support policies innovatively encapsulated in the 2021-2021 uh, budget comes at the right time, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. These measures will ensure that the Fijian not only Fijian economy not only recovers, but it actually grows. Yeah, yeah. The bottom line remains, Mr. Speaker, by helping our business to grow, we are helping Fijian families earn a livelihood and securing their future and that of their children. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, with respect to tourism, as one of our most labor-intensive sectors, millions of jobs across the world have been lost with repercussions felt across all the sectors of the economy in Fiji. Visitor arrivals are expected to decline by about 75% this year, whilst earnings, as per the 20, uh, July 2020 forecast, are expected to reduce by 70. To fully comprehend the crisis, 
how the crisis is impacting the business, we partnered with the IFC to conduct a COVID business survey. The study revealed that if international travel doesn't resume in the next few months, 60.5% of tourism businesses anticipate closure or moving away from tourism. Occupancy rates were down by 69% at a time when our industry was once at this peak. I love the way they come up with this, what will you do, where are you going to get the money from? It's a budget. Listen. Listen and learn. Order. Mr. Speaker, sir, Order. we Order. know the impact. Order. We know the impact. So let's focus on the fact that not all is lost. The tourism industry has shown resilience to adapt and to recuperate from adversity. Along with the rest of the world, we now pivot to focus on preparedness and opportunities for economic stability. How we respond in moments like this is a testament of our character and more importantly, our solidarity as Fijians as a nation, Mr. Speaker. Whilst the borders remain closed, we have focused on marketing domestic tourism through our Love Our Locals campaign as a starting point. And according to a recent survey of a cl close to about 40 hotels around Fiji, the average hotel occupancy rate was approximately 55%. These were all by our own people, Mr. Speaker, sir. Order, 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 order. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A lot of gibberish coming from that side, Mr. Speaker. As the minister responsible for tourism, yeah. Trade and transport, read. Our work plan has a new direction with four stages of market re-entry. Each stage works progressively towards rebuilding markets and calls for a different consumer message Order. and approach. Order. Honorable, honorable whip, you should know better than that. Thank you. You have it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I don't think she understands which, which portfolios I have. Through Tourism Fiji, Mr. Speaker, we've significantly realigned our marketing strategies for the coming financial year. Budget allocation for markets are being reprioritized and rediverted. For example, a portion of the budget for markets such as North America and China and India are being redirected to Australia and New Zealand. It goes without saying that Australia and New Zealand will play a key role in our tourism recovery. And given that Fiji makes only a small percentage of their outbound markets, there is immense opportunity for growth. This can be made possible with col uh, close collaboration with the industry to position Fiji as a trusted and value for money holiday destination and gradually opening our borders through a comprehensive, and I want to say this loud and proud, Mr. Speaker, sir, comprehensive COVID safe economic recovery framework, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir. We're working on our own bubble, a bula bubble, between Fiji, New Zealand, and Australia. Hold up. This will allow Aussies and Kiwis to holiday in, in our VIP, VIP lane, Mr. Speaker, sir. We have established Pacific pathways with Tuvalu, Kiribati, and Tonga, who rely on Fiji's national carrier for connectivity. Safe blue lanes have also been initiated for yachts and pleasure craft. Just two weeks ago, we welcome our first yacht from New Zealand. One in yacht alone bought about $40,000 into the local community over just two days. Not only that, Forex Outlet also has reopened, giving a little, little bit of life back into the bustling Denera. To date, 26 yachts have been approved to enter Fiji, and we're looking at approximately a million dollars being injected to the country by the end of the year. Mr. Speaker, sir, our greatest asset is our people. They are what makes the industry what it is today, and our economic resilient actually, resilience actually comes from them, it emanates from them. Fijians in the tourism industry and tourism dependent, sect uh, dependent sectors suffered the most. Thousands of jobs were lost and families have suffered, so we acted decisively. Mr. Speaker, sir, in addition to the removal of STT and cuts in ECAL duties and departure taxes, the 50% tax deduction for hotels and restaurants Engaging in local artisans will also benefit uh, Fijians who depend on tourism. Mr. Speaker, sir, we've received overwhelming responses from the industry, commending the Fijian government on this forward-looking budget. In the words of one of our major operators and very senior member of the industry, Mr. Tony Whitten, and I quote, 
the leadership shown by the government has not gone unnoticed. I am confident that together we can navigate our way through this crisis and emerge a stronger nation. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, sir, <clears throat> also understand the industry will play its part. We've taken the necessary steps to revive the industry. We absolutely must ensure that the benefits that come with this budget are actually realized. The tax and duty concessions need to be passed down to our tourists whilst raising the bar in terms of service we offer. The face, the face of tourism has permanently changed, signifying that Fiji will require a gargantuan effort by all to survive and thrive in the new normal of tourism. With respect to MSMEs, Mr. Speaker, sir, MSMEs commonly face challenges such as difficulties in accessing markets and market information, availability of finance, and the burden of regulatory requirements to do business. Through the MSME Fiji, the 1.44 million allocated for funding programs will continue to support a wide range of activities such as creative business ideas and innovative youth and grassroots businesses to become exporters. I'd like to highlight to Honorable Bulitabu, unfortunately he's not here, Mr. Speaker, that the NDP funding that he mentioned this morning under the MSME Fiji has actually received an increased allocation of $500,000. As we understand the essential support this program provides to the businesses in the north. Again, misinformation being passed on, Mr. Speaker. In addition, Honorable Lalambalavu, just a short while ago, please, sir, you said some things about the MSMEs. I think you forgot that the 30 million MSME concessional loans package, which is in addition to the 30 million already allocated in the pre budget announcement, will contribute towards the much-needed relief to the MSMEs. MSME Fiji will work with the Fiji Institute of Accountants, Women in Business, Fiji Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation, and the Fiji Revenue and Customs Services to ensure that deserving businesses are assisted. This is the budget. The budget passes, it all happens. And it will. These programs, Mr. Speaker, sir, have created a climate where bright businesses' ideas can become a reality. We will continue to handhold MSMEs through advisory, incubation, and training and mentorship programs. We will also continue to revive and diversify and register new cooperatives with the ultimate goal of elevating them from producers to manufacturers to exporters, in line with the Fiji, with making Fiji an investment-friendly destination. Mr. Speaker, sir, with respect to doing business, we have also taken steps to alleviate administrative burdens and reduce bureaucratic obstacles to fast-track approval processes and letting our businesses, especially our MSMEs, breathe in the present environment. Through the Doing Business Task Force, a collaborative group of permanent secretaries and CEOs of approval agencies, we will undertake transformational reforms to achieve the desired results for the betterment of the nation, and this includes our bold target of being ranked in the top 50 countries in doing business by 2025. This, Mr. Speaker, sir, is non-negotiable and everybody will play ball. Over the past few months, Mr. Speaker, the Fijian government has implemented uh, decisive reforms in the area of starting a business, beginning with the digital digitalization of the business registration process, bringing tax registration online, and now with the removal of business licensing, we have made it easier for Fijians to start a business and reduce the cost of doing business. In addition, the building permits process will be digitalized in one year which means that the building permit applications and approvals uh, will be done online. Moving to another critical component uh, of the economy, Mr. Speaker, sir, the transport sector, which enables development, builds markets, facilitates trade, links people, and connects local communities to, communities to the world. Mr. Speaker, sir, in 2020, uh, 2021 financial year, we will further enhance linkages between the maritime regions and the mainland. $2.6 million is allocated for the provision of shipping services to the nine routes, uh, namely the Upper Southern uh, Lao, the Northern Lao, Yasa Yasa Moala, Lower Southern Lao, Lomai Viti, Rotuma, Kandavu Yasawa, and Northeast Vanualevu. We will also introduce the new route of Benga Yanuda Watulele. Mr. Speaker, sir, with respect to a uh, matter that was raised by Ms. Honorable Andre Chale this morning, Honorable Member was referring to onshore confirmation that is signed at every port during the provision of these services. There's, this is still being signed off by the Turangani Koro or the Turangani Banoa, and the Ministry has also now included civil servants in the absence of the Turangani Koro. The Ministry is also working with the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries to enhance uh, and uh, rural maritime development to enhance trade and boost economic activities for Fijians living in remote and uh, rural and maritime communities. 
Mr. Speaker, sir, might I conclude by just saying, <clears throat> all throughout this morning we heard about rudderless, and everybody was suddenly grabbed onto this word rudderless. Whilst the opposition talks about a rudderless budget, I'd like to give them a lesson in, sh in ships. Firstly, you need a strong ship, which is the 51st government. We need a steadfast captain, and who better than our Honourable Prime Minister? We need a really strong engine room, and this side of the house is the engine room. Our navigational charge through these turbulent waters is our national budget. Our navigational aids are our budget strategies. And as a comparison of the other side of the house, there's a ship full of holes, a captain that doesn't exist, and an engine room that's misfiring every day. And some members of the crew about to jump ship onto a new political ship. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, with adversity comes new opportunities, and through building our resilience as Fijians and steadying our ship, we can come out together from the stormy waters that this crisis actually presents. By setting our vision and course beyond the pandemic, we will set the very foundation of navigating our nation to a better and a more prosperous future. I wholeheartedly, Mr. Speaker, support the 2020-2021 budget and look forward to the new financial year with a reinvigorated, re-engineered outlook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. I thank the Minister for Commerce, Trade, Tourism and Transport for his contribution to the debate. I now give the floor to